All right, we're joined here on King5 and King5.com by uh, three people uh, very invested in this story about the pipeline. And let's uh, meet them right now. Mark Ruffalo, well-known, of course, actor and activist. Matthew Randazzo, a senior advisor to the Snoqualmie Indian tribe. And Chief Namox, the hereditary chief of the Wet'suwet'en First Nation uh, in British Columbia in Canada. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Chief uh, Namox, let me begin with you. What is your mission in regards to this pipeline? Well, it's actually to stop the pipeline because we've never approved it. Like when they talk about consultation, you just said with Southern First Nation, that's actually a very small village on our territory. We as chiefs, we look after 22,000 square kilometers. So when we say that they need to talk to the proper rights and title holders, that is us on behalf of our entire nation. We're not elected officials. I mean, my carry is thousands of years old and I uphold the very fundamentals of what that name means when the chiefs before me carried that name and it is about the land the air the water the humanity and knowing that we all are as one and that's why we're so appreciative of the Snoqualmie for supporting us in this and knowing we're all related you know we all rely on clean water we all rely on clean air the sustenance of food us is salmon you know the salmon that we have is the largest run that we have in BC, unfortunately, with what happened to the Fraser River. What happens to us through the Witsinkwa down to the Skeen and our water flows to the Fraser too. So we're so appreciative of other nations standing. Mark, what is your mission here? Well, um, it came to my attention a few months ago um, that uh, the bank, uh, City National Bank in Hollywood, the Bank of the Stars, which is a RBC owned bank, is uh, basically um, helping to fund uh, the, this pipeline. And um, most of Hollywood is, is fighting uh, the, the brutalization of indigenous people and, um, and climate change. And while we sleep, we come to find our money has been secretly funding the very things that we've been fighting. And so, um, you know, I met with the bank, I met with the chiefs, uh, asked the, the bank to, to finally meet with the chiefs after 25 years of ignoring them. Um, th they heard their stories, their, their history, the brutality, the, the land theft, um, time and time again, the boarding schools. Um, and, and here we are again, um, kind of a systematic um, degradation of their rights and their voice. And they're, they're only useful if they say yes. Um, and if we're going to go to the UN's uh, FPIC, which is free prior and infor informed consent by our indigenous brothers and sisters, then um, this pipeline is, is illegal. Uh, it, it did not get that. And so I've been standing up and standing with uh, First Nations people here in the United States and abroad for, for a decade now. And um, this was a really important uh, issue for me. And we want to see this shut down. We want to see our bank divest from this. Uh, just like the UN says, this is an, uh, an infraction of indigenous rights and it should be shut down immediately. We're standing behind the UN's decision to do that. Matthew, what would you say is the mission of the Snoqualmie tribe with this pipeline? Thank you. The Snoqualmie Indian tribe is really focused on three things. One is supporting the rights, the inherent sovereign rights of indigenous peoples anywhere in the world. When we heard from the tribe's relatives up in British Columbia, the tribe has millennia of history trading and having diplomatic relationships with their relatives in the First Nations of Canada. This is something that's been consistent throughout their history. Secondly, this is a climate change issue. This is a fracked gas pipeline that's going to go directly into the Pacific Ocean. In a time of existential crisis and climate change, this project makes no sense whatsoever. Lastly, the tribe is fighting to protect the ecosystems that it fought to, that it reserved the right to utilize in the Treaty of Point Elliot in 1855, which includes the Salish Sea and the Pacific Ocean. This pipeline, by going directly to the Salish, going directly to the Pacific Ocean, has an impact on all the ecosystems along the coastlines, the ecosystems that support the Snoqualmie Indian tribe, every other tribe and First Nation in the Northwest, and everyone else who is a guest on these lands. So to the Snoqualmie Indian tribe, this is a really simple issue where the indigenous people who have stewarded these lands for millennia should have their rights respected, and we should be focused on working together to address climate change. Chief Namox, the, the Coastal Gas Link, the company that's building the pipeline, for our viewers who aren't as familiar with it, 
uh, said, at least to Variety magazine in a statement that they have been trying to engage with, in their words, the tribe since the beginning of this. Uh, how, Chief, would you respond to that? Well, Coastal Gasling is part of TC Energy, and what they've done is they've reached out to the band elect on reserves. You have to be reminded that the reserves have power within the boundaries of their reserve only, like a municipality. And the pipeline doesn't go through a reserve. It goes through our territory, which we as chiefs are responsible for. I think that the messaging they've got out is confuse that very fact that this pipeline does not affect one reserve. It does affect the land, the air, the water, our food sources, our sovereignty, our rights and title, and who we are as humans. Mark, what do you think is the biggest obstacle to finding success from your perspective? Um, you know, it's it's the it's it's a captured um, po politicians, um, you know, by an industry that uh, has a lot of heft, and um, we see it time and time again. I mean, I I come from a um, a frontline community. I, I was in up, upstate New York when the oil and gas industry wanted to frack there, and so I I actually lived through this. And um, there's a lot of money on on the on the table, and uh, a lot of that money goes to elected officials, and um, and you know at the end of the day, the, it, it's the banks who are funding these things, and um, and and that's what we have to we have to go after the banks now. I mean, we we just came out of COP26. Everyone was completely demoralized. At, at the end of the day, we saw there's going to be no political or uh, international um, action that that is tantamount to this catastrophe that we're looking at. And so the climate movement is looking to see who do we who do we engage with, and that's financing. Um, this end begins and ends with financing. And um, the relationship that financing has to, to politicians are, are what make our laws, what drives policy. And um, that's the biggest impediment now to doing action on climate change is, is who's financing this? Um, these companies, I mean, it, it is a lousy business model. Um, they're doing extreme energy extraction. It's very, very expensive to do. They can only do it if it's subsidized. And, and they can only do it if they're borrowing money to do it. And so, um, you know, this, this pipeline will never pay for itself. If indeed we're, we're going to stop by 2030, this pipeline, it has to be operating for 30, 40 years just to pay for itself. It, it is ripping off the Canadian people and it's using our money, you know, people who are fighting climate change to uh, to actually fund it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I would love to see people like Dave Mackay, who is says he's a climate champion, uh, who has RBC to step up and say, hey, we're going to put our money where our mouth is. We're going to pull our funding on this. And if they did, the 20 other banks that are in this same racket would all follow suit. And that's what we need to have happen. We need to have good people actually do good things. Matthew, considering how much uh, weight political and financial is behind it, what is your realistic expectation uh, in this process? So I think most Washingtonians don't understand that Washington State has been on the front line of the reform of indigenous human rights. Last year, the Snoqualmie Indian tribe participated in an effort that got free prior to informed consent into law for the first time in American history, which changed the concept of a tribe being consulted with and getting consulted with as a box checking exercise and then can be ignored to a tribe if a project is proposed that impacts their lands or rights, they have a right to simply say yes or no. So in Washington state, in a very narrow band of law, there is a situation where tribes have the right to simply say no to projects like this. And it is a Snoqualmie's goal, regardless of whether it's this pipeline or the next one or one two dozen down the road, that all indigenous peoples around the world, and especially in North America, have the support to organize and change the laws so this situation doesn't happen. Tribes have a right to say yes or no on projects that impact their lands, rights, and sacred places. And the Snoqualmie Indian tribe isn't in the business of, of guessing what the odds are of this situation. The tribe is in the position that they're going to stand for what they believe in, they're going to stand with their indigenous brothers and sisters, and they're going to fight this to the last moment they can fight it. Chief Nomox, what to you would be a satisfactory outcome? No pipelines. 
like in our feast hall, which is our place of worship. That's where our governance system is. That's where our place of understanding is. We said no pipelines from day one. This isn't the first project that has come across the table, but they put a price on our clean water, our rights and title, who we are. And then they say that, as Mark said earlier, if we say no, then all of a sudden out comes the heavy hitters. We've been invaded three times, armed personnel, dogs, sniper rifles. How dare they in a democratic country such as Canada? It's not right. It's inhumane. And for what? Something that's going to be shipped overseas? We get left with a mess. These other people, they get to go home. We are home. We're supposed to look after the world together, not destroy it. Mark, what to you would be a satisfactory outcome? To end the pipeline and to and have Canada, you know, change its entire paradigm. I mean, right now the tar sands, the fracking, all of that infringes on on, on native rights. Um, they haven't been consulted. I mean, they've been consulted, but they, there hasn't been consent. And consent is yes or no. It's just like consent in any other uh, any other um, milieu. Um, I would love to see Canada actually take these billions of dollars and put it into real climate solutions at this point. That doesn't brutalize indigenous people. That builds out the economy for all of us, not just a few of us at the top of the, uh, at the, top of the uh, pyramid here, which fossil fuels do, and, and democratizes energy and lets the, everybody get, be part of it. If we move to this transition, we would create millions of good paying, safe jobs that are upwardly mobile, for, and we would, we would lose, we would gain millions Millions more than we would actually lose. And I would like to see Canada adopt that approach to climate change, to indigenous rights, and to their economy, which is which is the way we all have to go now. Matthew, what would be satisfactory to you and the Snoqualmie tribe? I think first off, we're looking for Washington State and the American federal government to utilize its diplomatic role and support the indigenous peoples of Canada and support addressing climate change. Well, this is going to take major co collective action. Secondly, we hope for this project to be a revolutionary turning point that addresses the two crises we face right now in this world. We face a, an ecological crisis with climate change. We face a human rights crisis with the rise of authoritarianism and anti-indigenous uh, politics across the globe. If we don't get a control of the climate change crisis very soon, there will be no turning back. This is an existential fight and we don't have any time to waste. And so the Snoqualmie Indian tribe is hoping that uh, our friends in the First Nations in Canada succeed in defeating this pipeline. We hope that it is a turning point that allows Canada and the United States to start looking at its laws so we don't continue to have to fight these battles every month in a different part of North America forever and ever until we run out of time. Chief Namox, Matthew Randazzo, Mark Ruffalo, thanks for joining us on King5 and King5.com. Thank you, Steve.